the House will attend to the introduction of guests. Madam Speaker, in the gallery with us, we have Nusrat, Misbah, Adil, and Sanan Tahir, the wife, sons, and daughter of Representative Tahir, Mohammed Bombin, Dr. Sid Abdullah, and Dr. Salman, who are all friends of Representative Tahir. Welcome to the New Hampshire House. Representative Tahir requests unanimous consent of the House. The House will be in order. Madam Speaker, honorable colleagues, despite the long day, very long day in month of May, I remember in 10 years, I appreciate your indulgence. Madam Speaker, born in India, migrated to Pakistan at the age of three, came to United States at the age of 25 with only $150 in my pocket that I borrowed, worked hard, long, became a millionaire, lost everything in 89, retooled myself with the help of my wife and children, became comfortable again, challenged by our children, encouraged by my late professor Zia Shah, supported by friends and constituents. Here I am. I'm so grateful to my family, my wife, my children, the constituents of Ward 2 in Manchester. I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart to the veterans of the United States of America in general, to the veterans in District 9, Manchester Ward 2 in particular, who gave me the land of opportunity so I could come work hard seven days a week 18, 20, 16 hours a day and realize the American dream. I could not have done without their sacrifices, most of whom I never met. I want to thank the clerk's office. She's been tough but fair. <laughs> I never dare to challenge her because she knows too much. Her staff. I want to thank the LS, the Legislative Services. They have been very good. The staff at the LOB, the security and the police officers, and those whom I have never met, particularly Richard, who gave me ride from the Store Street parking lot to the LOB and to the State House. I want to thank all the members of the Public Works and Highway Committee whom I worked with six years. I want to thank the chairman and the members of Science, Technology, and Energy Committee, one of the most unbiased nonpartisan chairmen I have seen in the committees I have worked with. I want to thank the members of the Committee on Labor, Industrial, and Rehabilitative Services. I learned so much from them. I gave it all to them, and I'm positive. The respect they showed to me, the honor they gave it to me, I can never forget that. I want to thank this House and the New Hampshire Senate being courageous enough to pass HCR 16, sponsored by Honorable Senator Lou Dallas Sandro, 
and deputy majority, former deputy majority of the House, Robert J. Gaida. As a result of that HCR, the hearing took place in the U.S. Congress that encouraged India and Pakistan to sit down at the table and resolve their conflict. The conflict to which General Petraeus a few weeks ago referred to by suggesting to resolve the Kashmir issue. Then Senator from District 19, Separado, now with us as member of this Honorable House, accompanied us in the leadership of Robert J. Gaida and delivered that HCR 16, copy of that, to the Parliament of Independent Kashmir, or Azad Kashmir, they call it. 20 million people were thankful to this house. It has never happened before in any state of the United States of America. There was a hope that that conflict would be resolved. That conflict, the resolution of that conflict, was guaranteed by the United, Na United States in 1948. To this point, nothing has happened. I look at myself sitting on top of a mountain looking at both sides, to my right and to my left. One side is Muslim world, on the other side is a non-Muslim world. I know the feelings of the American people. I've said it hundreds, if not thousands of times, that Americans are the most generous, loving, caring, sharing people. For that reason, right after 9-11, for three weeks, I invited seven Pakistani Americans from throughout the United States at our own expense, 10 to $15,000 a pop. We felt that if this country is worth working, raising your families, and making a living, this country was worth selling. We felt we have to prove ourselves that we are Americans. For a Muslim to take an oath to defend the Constitution, honor, and dignity of this country, you cannot have in your mouth a different than you, what you have in your heart. Otherwise, you are a bigot and you go to hell, for sure. We wanted to prove that. I took this oath six times, five times here, one time when I was naturalized citizen in 1978. I see bigotry, and again, the values I learned here and the lessons I learned to agree to disagree only in the United States of America. Thank God I was not in the parliament of Russia or Czechoslovakia or another country where they beat each other, kill each other for disagreeing with each other. The reason why I'm saying that, the war in Afghanistan and Pakistan has taken a turn. The same Afghanistan, which in 89, proved to be our ally, we disintegrated Soviet Union. We took off from there without worrying what will happen. Osama bin Laden took over, whom we used to pay five to six million dollars a week to hire jihadist fighters from Muslim countries. Then we realized we made a mistake, and now we are there my honorable colleague, Madam Speaker, I went to Pakistan two, three times a year. I faced people in the universities, the editorial boards of the paper. I was interviewed by almost every TV station. There are about 50, 60 now, radio stations, you name it. I have never forgotten that I'm an American. I've always told them I'm an American. But I cannot forget the education, the kindness. People of Pakistan showed it to me. They were never hostile because 
majority of Pakistani people have been friends of the United States of America. February of 2009, 84% Pakistanis loved United States. I addressed the ambassador of United States, Ann Patterson, ambassador of Pakistan from Washington, D.C., and about 80 more individuals from State Department and Pakistani Americans on July 9, 2009 in Manhattan. At that time, 84% Pakistanis disliked America. And I was concerned as an American, what had gone wrong? It's the drone attacks. It's the lack of trust. We believe, and I hear this when I go to Pakistan, that American government is not fighting the war for America. They're fighting some other country's war. To them, India is involved big time bombing Pakistani installations, intelligence, and otherwise, and their suspicions must be addressed. Somehow, our government has been very lousy in public relations. We have spent billions of dollars to no avail. Whereas, we, eight Pakistani Americans in 2001, spent our own money, and according to then President Musharraf, and State Department, we brought people together because we knew that the American people were not Satan. We also knew the majority of the Pakistanis were not terrorists. We called that group as ambassador of understanding, and it worked. The State Department acknowledged it, and the, the uh, government of Pervez Musharraf acknowledged it. They find us bigot because we call for democracy in Muslim countries, but at the same time, we support dictators. Mr. 10% is now Mr. 100% President of Pakistan, according to New York Times. We support him. Why is it? We believe and that we are champions of human rights, but they ask me a question. Are human rights limited to within the borders of the United States or the human beings outside the United States also have human rights? These questions I have not been able to answer or maybe I did not want to answer. They want to know that if a Christian nun covers herself, it's not bad, but if a Muslim woman covers herself and call it a hijab, it becomes irritant to some non-Muslims. They want to know why jihad has bothered people. Jihad is an Arabic word, means struggle, to work hard, to speak out in opposition to, let's say, to eliminate poverty, to eliminate disease. Yet it is misunderstood by many people. As I have learned from you so much, I can never pay you back. It's my obligation to let you know that I know something you may or may not know. Jihad is always taken as a, a word which means fight, a war, but it's not killing non-Muslims. Absolutely not, positively not. If that was the case, I would have said so. Allah in Arabic is our creator, God. If somebody says God is great, no, it doesn't bother anybody. But if somebody say Allahu Akbar, Akbar means big, great. A Muslim who says his prayer five times a day must say at least 240 times Allahu Akbar or their prayers are not complete, period. So this is something I wanted to get out of my chest. Dictatorships in Pakistan, in Afghanistan should have never been supported by us but it is convenient for us to do so. We forgot the fact that this century is full of knowledge. Every nation has knowledge through computers, internet, and what have you. I want to bring another fact to your knowledge. 65% of the 180 million Pakistanis are under the age of 35. That's about 117 million people. If we direct them to the right side, 
we can heap a big and profitable harvest in crop. If we let them go, they could be destructive to our cause. Nobody in Asia is our friend. Look at the map, close your eyes and look at the map. Do you believe Russians, Chinese, Iranians, Indians, Tibetans, or anybody else? Pakistan has been, will continue to be our friend. Pakistanis are very good people, very intelligent people, but we should keep our message straight, concise, precise, and one message, not be different at different times. There's no electricity in Pakistan. Unemployment is like 50%. People are laid off in every city in town. Crimes are huge, and we must direct our attention, if we can, to that 65% population. I want to thank you, lastly, for allowing me to speak, for sharing your knowledge and experience with me. I can never forget this. I would have never known what I know today. Democrats, Republican, Independent, they have been so kind and respectful of me that I must apologize to you that when my son, Misba, God bless him, he's in California, he challenged me to give back to the people of the United States and he asked me to run for this seat. I said, you must be kidding. <laughs> Nobody's gonna vote for me. This is only 1% minority in New Hampshire. And he said, no, daddy. You have been working with food pantries. Wherever somebody needs you, you are there. You have been working with in, you know, injured and disabled veterans. Where there is a fire, you are there. Where there is something needed, you are there. I know, you are my dad. And I did not work hard enough in 1998. I lost by 12 votes. I started work the same day for the next election, and I got many, many four or five hundred more votes than my next opponent. And I was ashamed of myself. I thought I was biased. And I apologize to you, and I apologize to people of New Hampshire, and I apologize to the people in District 9, Manchester War too. May God bless you all. May God bless the United States of America. I love you all. Thank you so much.